Hello and welcome to the first of many tutorials where we will try to introduce you to the unique possibilities of the unlimited 3D platform. Today we are going to talk about platform's capabilities and we are going to take a quick look at the workflow that the 3D artists go through to create beautiful interactive 3D solutions and configurators. Unlimited 3D and AR are changing the world of e-commerce. Unlimited 3D is a leading engine supporting global brands in their 3D transformation that elevates their digital presence. Utilizing the same 3D assets across e-commerce, digital advertising, social media, and the ability to repurpose the very same digital twins as NFTs or metaverse activations. Now, for the most curious of you out there, we will dive into the basics of the platform and how it should be used to create 3D viewers or 3D configurators. You have your 3D model and are ready to start working on the unlimited 3D platform. We support three types of file formats. FBX, OBJ, and GLB. Depending on your 3D software you might want to experiment with these formats and see which one suits you the best. After a successful upload, drag and drop the model in the scene and press save. When uploading the model, keep in mind that all the material names that exist in the model will also be recreated on the platform. Don't worry, you can easily rename them, delete them or clone them later. However, the textures that are parts of that material will usually have to be uploaded manually, unless you are uploading GLB file format. Don't forget that you can use a useful feature called Update. You can constantly work on improving your 3D asset and upload it on the unlimited 3D platform without having to delete the old solution and re-upload the new one. Remember to occasionally save your work, as there is no autosave on unlimited 3D. Once the model is uploaded, usually, what you want to do next, is define the kind of lighting you want to have in your scene. At the moment we offer default lighting with our HDRI Studio map, but have in mind that HDRI is very demanding in terms of performance, so it might be a good idea to try to get great results with JPEG or PNG textures. This will significantly improve loading time, smoothness, and overall solution performance. In the Lighting tab, we offer the possibility to add additional physical lights so you can further highlight part of the model, and we will cover this in more detail in one of the following tutorials. Also, we allow our users to use one ambient occlusion map for the whole model, while still allowing for the materials to change on different parts. We will explain this a bit more in the material part of the tutorial and as well in some of the following tutorials. Once you are happy with the lighting of your scene, it's time to create materials that are going to be used in your solution. When you uploaded your model there is a high chance that the model contains some materials and those materials are presented in the library. You can browse through the library in search of wanted assets, create subfolders for easier management of materials with a different version or you can simply download all assets that are being used in the solution. You can also delete any unwanted assets from the library by right-clicking the asset and selecting Delete. Have in mind that you cannot delete assets that are used in the current solution. So you need to select the 3D element that has the material applied to it and switch it to some other. You can tell what asset is being used in the solution with the small purple triangle in the lower right corner of the asset. You can create a new material by clicking on the plus icon in the Material tab. You can also clone the material with all of its existing properties into new material. You can also copy all of the properties of the material by clicking the C button and paste it into another wanted material by clicking the P button. Unlimited 3D offers an extensive set of tools needed to create beautiful materials. We will discuss these options in more detail in some of the following tutorials, but the idea is to use the tools to get the best results possible. There is no best way to achieve this but we will discuss some of our methods in one of the following tutorials. Other things that we want to mention are possibilities to change annotation materials, or as we call them, sprites. Also, the overlay function allows you to add text or images on top of your 3D models, and the decal tool. Decals are a stamping tool that lets you visually place any image that you want on the model.
Once you've prepared your materials, you should think about how you want your users to experience the working solution. Let's go through some of the options that the Unlimited 3D platform offers to its users. In the Cameras tab by default, you get Camera Publish. Here you can control the maximum near-far distance, the field of view, and the initial position and target of the camera. By setting the wanted first angle of your solution you can then tick the padlock icon and that will be the default position for that camera. It's worth reminding that your users are going to be viewing the solution both on desktop and mobile devices, and the resolutions there are different. So it's good practice to create additional cameras that will be used for mobile solutions. You can preview the different resolutions in the preview tab, but more on that topic later. In the camera control section, you can also define maximum zoom in and out, maximum rotation angles, auto rotation of your camera, whether you will allow your users to pan the solution, and much more. All the changes are immediately previewed in your solution as long as you have the wanted camera control active. Remember, you can have multiple camera controls depending on the device and your desired scenario of the solution. Annotations are a very important part of every solution. It allows you to have a clickable button that can activate some wanted action, pop-up text, video, or many other possibilities. Annotations are 2D planes that are always perpendicular to the angle of the camera. They also use materials and can be changed and configured if needed. You can control the appearance of annotations and which material is going to be applied to them. Later you can set different rules depending on what you want to happen when you interact with the annotation. We will cover this in more detail in some of the future tutorials. Unlimited 3D supports animations created in your modeling software. When you upload the model you can preview existing animations in the Animation Preview tab. While we can preview the animations, we will need to create animation sets in order to link them to our Unlimited 3D editor. After we have done that, we can add animation states which actually represents individual animation sequences that are exported with the model. Now we can control the same basic parameters of our animation states. We can set animations to be cyclic or repeatable by enabling repeat option, we can set the number of cycles, or if we click on the infinite button on the left, the animation will be looped indefinitely, or when we instruct it to end through another action. We also have control over the speed animation, and whether we want the animation to be clamped at the start or end, this can be useful if there is another animation that is connected when the previous one is ended. AR is a built-in functionality in Unlimited 3D. To upload the models, simply drag and drop your GLB and USDZ models in their respective slots within the AR tab. Once the upload process is done, just publish your solution and the AR icon will appear in the top left corner of your solution. Once clicked, you can either scan it by mobile device, or you can open the link to the solution on your phone and just click on the AR icon. Now you can place the model in your own environment and have a more immersive experience with Unlimited 3D. Unlimited 3D actions represent a set of instructions which can add more functionality to our solutions. We can create some simple animation sequences, camera, transitions or link user interaction with different functions. This functionality requires a dedicated tutorial for full understanding, but we will go over a very basic camera movement triggered by the user. Simple logic behind actions requires us to create, transition, modifier, and a rule. By combining these three parameters we can add a unique action to our solution. In the transitions tab we will create a new transition with our camera selected. After that, we can determine the new position to which the camera will move, and we can preview that by clicking on Activate. Next, we need to create a modifier that will be used to activate our transition. We will choose Activate Transition for the action type, and choose our camera transition. Last, we will create a rule, and select Click as target and select our camera modifier. In the list for our new rule we can select our mesh and tick the box beside it. 
Now, we can preview our camera motion by going to the Preview tab and clicking on our mesh. To trigger our transitions we can also add annotations, which can again be linked with a rule to give users more functionality and better experience when viewing the models. Default Scene Panel is accessed by clicking on the Scene tab. Here, we can specify which items will be used for the initial load of the solution. It is not to be confused with our panel on the right, where we have a similar list of objects, lights, camera, and other parameters. List on the right side of the screen is reserved for what we see while we are editing our scene, and in the default scene we are controlling only what will be visible in the published solution. Here we can choose the default camera, enable post-processing, activate animation by default and turn on or off our lights. Device compatibility checks, or DC checks is a feature developed specifically for users to be able to check their solution and have a basic understanding of how well it is optimized. These are specific to the solution's type, desktop or mobile. When creating your solution, have in mind what type of devices will be used to view the solution. If you selected mobile for example, texture restrictions, number of allowed meshes and other parameters by which DC check is working, will be more strict, to allow more room for performance for older devices. This is more a recommendation than a rule of thumb, you can still publish the solution even if it has a low score on DC checks, but be aware that older devices could have issues with performance. We can suggest that you try your best to get acceptable results and take the time to optimize textures, models, and default scene. Unlimited 3D does not have an autosave feature, we need to manually click on the save button to save any changes that we made. Alternatively this can be used to test some settings out, and if we are not satisfied, we can just reload the page, and our last saved settings will be loaded. It is a good idea to save your solution after some major changes, to avoid any time loss if we accidentally reload the page with our solution. Preview page is a final stop before publishing our solution. Here we can find a very useful feature that lets us preview how the solution will look like on a particular device. There is a list of available devices, but you can specify your own custom resolution and have a real-time preview of how your solution will look once published. We can also cycle through a list of our cameras and their camera controls, as well as different viewports. It is a good practice to check everything in the preview page before publishing the solution. Publish page is the final step before our solution goes live on the web. Here we can find a list of all of the previous published versions, our iframe link for embedding the solution, an API link. When we publish the solution we will get a link in this list, if we republish it again, the new solution link will be active, but for next 120 hours, our old version is kept, and in that time we can revert to the old link if we need to. This concludes our basic guide to unlimited 3D platform. Feel free to explore and test all the features and capabilities, and we wish you a successful 3D journey with us, and stay tuned for more in-depth tutorials. If you have any questions drop them in the comment section below, or join our Discord channel and interact with fellow 3D enthusiasts. You can tag 3Dium and Unlimited 3D with your published solutions and become a part of our growing 3D community. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.